What's up residents, Alistair here, and welcome back to Dangerville. And today we're going to be taking a look into one of the series' most iconic monsters, Rodan, and taking a deep dive into his most destructive ability, the power to create hurricanes over the very ground he flies over, and more specifically, how fast he can actually fly when compared to mankind's most advanced weaponry and vehicles. And since there's a chance Rodan could return for Godzilla vs Kong, let's take a look into how fast Rodan can fly and how destructive it can really be. But before we get into it, we'd appreciate it if you took one minute to hear from our sponsor, The Ridge. Now you might be thinking, I've got a wallet. Well, let me tell you that this is the wallet of the future, or present. This little wallet holds up to 12 cards, whether that's uh, gift cards or business cards or credit cards or even birthday cards. Okay, um, maybe not birthday cards, but it's no surprise that this thing takes up such a small amount of space in your pocket, especially when compared to a more traditional wallet, which really haven't changed design for about 40 years. Now, I was skeptical about this when I first heard of it, but when you get to use it, it's actually really good. You realize you don't actually use that much of your wallet in the first place. It's a lot of empty space. In this era of Apple Pay and contactless cards, it's nice to know that you can keep the bare essentials with you wherever you go. Even say if you go somewhere with no internet or no contactless payments. And since it's so lightweight and compact, it barely feels like you've got anything in your pocket. I went with the Burnt Titanium because it is beautiful. And there's over 30 different configurations so you yourself can choose something that matches your style. And since we like it so much, we've set up a 10% discount for all of you first time buyers. Just follow the link at www.ridge.com forward slash Dangerville and use the code Dangerville to get money off and to get free worldwide shipping. Link will be in the description. Thanks to the Ridge for the opportunity, I really do love it. Thanks residents for listening to the sponsor. Now, let's get to some monsters. Welcome back. So, how many of you are Rodan enthusiasts? Let yourself be known in the comment section down below. Rodan famously appeared in the 1956 Toho film, cleverly titled Rodan, or Radon in Japan where it originated, where two irradiated species of prehistoric Pteranodon rose up from their hibernation in order to mate and start a new family in a world overpopulated by humans, unlike what they were used to seeing millions of years ago. And spoilers in case you want to watch the film, but it ends tragically as both animals are shot down and buried inside the molten slopes of a volcano, preventing them from starting a family of their own. This film is the first to showcase their destructive hurricane ability, a side effect of the sheer force of the thrust needed in order to propel the Titan across the world at extreme speeds. Rodan would go on to be featured in nine subsequent Godzilla movies, including Invasion of the Astro Monster, Destroy All Monsters, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, Godzilla Final Wars, and more with its most recent inclusion being the latest entry in Legendary's MonsterVerse, Godzilla King of the Monsters, where in a reverse role, Rodan burst from a volcano, almost as a big middle finger to the way his ancestors died, showing that he's something much more deadly. In the film, Rodan is woken up by a bioterrorist organization that hoped to give the Titans back complete reign of the planet in order to end man's destructive rule over the fate of planet Earth. The film saw Rodan use his deadly attack to flatten cities and crush fighter jets that he found himself outrunning at high speeds. He found himself fighting the mighty Ghidorah and the majestic Mothra. He unfortunately lost the battle to Ghidorah after a brutal brawl, and then managed to critically wound Mothra, though not without taking a significant injury, a scythe to the chest which temporarily immobilized him. At the end of the great battle between Godzilla and Ghidorah, Rodan submitted to Godzilla by bowing to him, letting him know that he will abide to Godzilla's rule. During the end credits of King of the Monsters, it explains that Rodan has flown to another volcano to hibernate until needed once again, which leads us into Godzilla vs Kong. So, based on what we've seen in King of the Monsters, how fast could we see him fly in the next entry of the Monsterverse, and could his injury have an effect on his speed? The biggest indication of the speed of Rodan is by comparing him against the fighter jets that tried to take him down, the F-35 Lightning II. These loud but deadly machines fly at a top speed of 1,200 miles per hour. For speeds like these, a measurement called Mach is used, which is designed to demonstrate how fast they are when compared to the speed of sound. If Mach 1 is considered the speed of sound, then the Lightning IIs fly at a speed of 1.6 Mach. In the film, we bear witness to the jets seemingly unable to outrun Rodan, though they definitely put up a valiant effort. 
The missiles the fighter jets used would have been the ASR AAM missiles, advanced short-range air-to-air missiles, a very smart missile that relies on target temperatures in order to lock on and when launched shoot at the enemy at speeds of Mark III. Rodan found himself unable to outdo these deadly weapons of war. So, if we use the Mach number of these fighter jets and calculate the speed in which Rodan accelerates towards them, assuming this is top speed in order to not get caught, then we can come to the conclusion that Rodan flies at least an extra 300 miles per hour faster, giving him a total flight speed of 1,534 miles per hour, meaning he has a general speed of Mark II compared to the fighter jet's 1.6 Mark. Though he would have flown slower than Mark III, thanks to the information we have about the Lightning II's weaponry, which flies at a speed of 2,301 miles per hour. Evidently, thanks to the thrust needed in order to keep him moving, this would definitely flatten cities, since even the most devastating hurricanes have a top wind speed of 157 miles per hour, which is enough to lift up cars, buildings, and even people. The more structurally outdated skyscrapers have a wind resistance of around 200 miles per hour, meaning Rodan's hurricanes would have been enough to topple the biggest of buildings, including the Empire State Building. So, there you go. Rodan can fly at a speed of at least 2 Mach, being 1,534 miles per hour, with anything up to 2.5 Mach, 1,918 miles per hour being a possibility, depending on whether he's lifting off, diving, or flying at cruising speed. Rodan in King of the Monsters became a terrifying force of nature, a destructive prehistoric monster that can outmatch some of mankind's most advanced weapons. And now we know how fast Rodan can really fly. Maybe for Godzilla vs Kong, Rodan will have taken a break to do some training at the gym, and he'll come back even faster and stronger. But for that, we'll just have to wait and see. The injury he sustained from Mothra will most likely heal thanks to Rodan taking the time to hibernate and rejuvenate from the damages taken in the Great Battle, meaning he will very likely not fly any slower or any faster. But what do you guys think of this information? Was it as fast as you expected? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more factual analysis of famous kaiju, leave a like because it lets us know we want to see more of. And don't forget to subscribe and stomp that notification button to become a resident of our lovely town of Dangerville today. I've been Alistair, and we'll see you in the next one.